this is a cricket poem. Um, this is because we've had such a wonderful summer of test matches. I like to do seasonal poems. And this is called Remains, and it's got an epigraph from Ezra Pound. What thou lovest well remains, the rest is dross. And I probably don't need to remind you that Clive Radley uh, was born in Norfolk and played for England. Um, and so this is my cricket history. I've known scores of squares, wickets freshly mown on playing fields on sloping village greens. I've clattered down pavilion steps alone, pulling a glove on, or with the others, loosening up, throwing catches, going out to field. I've walked in, on my toes as the bowler bowled. I've crouched in front of the bat and dived, snapped up sharp chances, flung out an arm and running underneath skied cover drive, watched the ball into my hands. But forgotten them all, even the dropped ones I knew I'd never lived down. I've bowled too, polished the ball on my thigh and adjusted the seam under my fingers, made it swing and move off the pitch. I varied my pace slightly, used the width of the crease to alter the angle. However many wickets I took, just two stay with me. Dad bowled for a duck between bat and pad in the father's match when I was 13. The strange pain of that. And Clive Radley, then at Norwich School, second ball, a slash at a wide long hop, a stinging two-handed overhead catch for Crow Goodley in the gully. And I've been an opener, middle order, scored runs, done my bit with a straight bat, a good eye and dogged application. I've seen off the pace men and learnt to play spin, to keep the ball down, to cut and dry, to glance and pull, to steal quick singles. And once, playing for Tilford at home, for half an hour I was possessed. I knew how to do it and dared to. I drove down the line, perfect timing. And taking the ball on the rise, I lifted it over the bowler's head. Then over long on to thud into the oak, and over long off to bounce in the road, and on through a hush, a storm of cheers from the drinkers outside the barley mow. It was great. <laughs> so these are. This is, I'm going to read a couple of poems from a sequence called Living with Lemons, which kind of cheered me up to write. Um, so these are the last two. If it's something you're lacking zest, it might help to remind yourself that the word derives from Old French for lemon peel which must mean you've actually got some. Surely you always keep a lemon in. <laughs> Unlike Sidney Smith, who moved in 1808 to his living at Foston Le Clay, a place so out of the way, he wrote to friends in London, I am 12 miles from a lemon. <laughs> So this is um, Living by the Sea, which I do in Suffolk, <coughs> well, a mile and a half from the sea, uh, and this gives me the opportunity to read, um, and I'll do it in a minute, I, I'm, I'm an odd phenomenon, I'm a, a um, lapsed Catholic convert. There aren't, there aren't many of us. 
So, and this was this came out in a in a pamphlet that uh, um, David Hart did uh, called "Is a Religious Poem Possible in the Early 21st Century?" <laughs> Catch it. <laughs> and um, what, it, there's a reference to um, Willie Wetleg, the poem by um, Lawrence, which goes, I can't stand Willie Wetleg, can't stand him at any price. He's resigned, and when you hit him, he lets you hit him twice. <laughs> so, <clears throat> living by the sea. For weeks I've been on the Kiviv for a hint of a whisper, a footfall, a password convincing me God's coming through the lines, but no joy. I'm dropping pebbles again down the well of myself, still dry. I'm poking about in this skip, but everything I turn up best left chucked out. Good riddance to the one true religion, to the oratond voice of the priest, to the boulder of dogma braced against the face of my disbelief, the Pope infallible on and off, Christ's body and blood somehow more than a metaphor. And remember the rhythm method, the self-flagellation, the missions, the solemn trumped-up confessions, Father, forgive me, for my sins were of so little interest, even to me. <laughs> Thank you, D.H. Lawrence, for Willie Wetchek. I'll miss Mass and not miss it. Belong instead to myself and this place. Isn't the sea, say, sufficient? Never the same, always more itself than I could have imagined. Waves for some 50 yards beyond that grey, lumpy, white crests. A couple of gulls slide across. Black flags, orange boys to mark crab pots that sink in the troughs. A shag beats low up the coast. Nothing else today, no boats, the horizon a mile or two off. Farther out, I'd rather not go for now. Though I'll swim, wade in, the cold making me gasp, take the plunge, alive and kicking through a breaking wave's blind heave.